coming, ladies and gentlemen, to another of the interesting landmarks of the city of London. And these imposing stone buildings are New Scotland Yard, where day and night the guardians of London's law and order keep their sleepless vigil. I thought you might be interested in this, Colonel Nielsen. Huh? Hugh C. Drummond, former captain in His Majesty's Royal Air Force, will marry Miss Phyllis Clavering, niece of Mrs. Blanche Clavering, in Geneva, Switzerland, on Thursday next. Greer, that young man has caused me more headaches than any man alive. It's a pity, too. He means so well. You're probably glad he's in Switzerland. Hmm. He'd only stay there. I'll try and do my work for me. By the way, uh, I want to send a wedding present to Captain Drummond. A book. A book, sir? Mm -hmm. and, and on second thoughts, I think I'll make it two books. Yeah, one for Drummond and one for Miss Clavering. What address, sir? Harry, don't you think my yielding's improving? I really couldn't say so. Maybe he's right, Phyllis. What's this, more loot? Still coming in, sir? Darling, we must get married again and again and again. And again and again. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Well, now it's all right, Herr Detective. Where is the brat? This is the brat. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Now, who sent that? The Bulldog Drummond with felicitations of the Drones Club. Now, what do you say it is, Tenny? Eros, the Greek god of love, sir. Why, uh, Tenny? Research work, Mr. Crossword puzzles. Have you any suggestions, Tenny? Oh, I think it deserves to meet with an accident, sir. A colossal idea. I rather like it, sir. <laughs> well, there's something else from Colonel Nielsen. How to grow tobacco in Rhodesia and like it. It's a funny book to give us. I beg your pardon, sir. That's meant for you individually. Colonel Nielsen sent the other one for Miss Clavery. Travels with a donkey. Be read on the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, sir. Uh, we won't need you till dinner time, Tenny. Uh, who will look after the wedding persons? Well, the hair detective will watch them. And who will watch the detective, sir? Come on, darling. Well, Tenny, have you seen my Aunt Blanche? Uh, she's outside with Sir Raymond Blantry. <coughs> Got it. Oh, that's fine. Now, now it's your turn. Uh. There. <laughs> oh, oh, my nephew niece. That is my niece and my nephew to me. He isn't really my nephew yet, you understand. Children, I want you to meet one of my oldest and dearest friends. He's the head of a huge diamond syndicate. Sir Raymond... Uh, uh, Sir Raymond... Sir Raymond Blantry. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Sir Raymond uh, Drummond, this is Bulldog Clavering. Uh, Miss uh, yes, Blanche, this, this is Phyllis. <laughs> Packages for Captain Drummond here. Yeah. Oh. More loot, darling. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, this must be valuable. Look at all the insurance stamps. That's from Gwen and Elsie. Oh, lovely, isn't it? Where did that come from? From Gwen Longwood. What did she say, Hugh? Dear Hugh and Phyllis, look what Daddy just made in his laboratory. Oh, I thought it was real. Her father made this. You, you mustn't tell anybody who made it because it's a secret. Because it... <laughs> this is my wedding gift. Silly old Elsie has something else, but he's bringing it in person because they won't let him ship it. Don't get married until we get there, Gwen. Now, what in the world do you suppose it could be? You have a perfect right to be alone for a minute or two. Well, not if Aunt Blanche knows anything about it. You happy, darling? Of course I am. Why, of course. Well, because uh, you're you, I suppose. And is that the only reason? Well, because 
We're together, and you've given up all those crazy, reckless adventures just to settle down with me. Yes, dear, that's right. You promise, don't forget me. No, that. I won't forget. You may consider me settled down. And after the honeymoon, we'll buy a house in the country and have a big garden. And, and the drum and hollyhocks will be famous in every flower show in England. You're not serious. I'm serious about you. You'd better be. I won't have my affections tampered with. these the spice of love in this. Would you like one? What do you think, Kenny? Well, uh, I hardly think it's necessary in your case, Miss. Dinner is about to be announced. Come on, I'm family. Where have you been, Roberts? I've been trying to find you all the afternoon. Well, I only just got your message. I've just seen an artificial diamond that looked absolutely real to me. Where is it? In there, among the wedding presents. We must get hold of it at any cost and submit it to all possible tests. Well, I'll do my best. Sir Raymond! Oh, Sir Raymond, you're neglecting me shamefully. I'm sorry, I'm sure. Excuse me, will you? I wanted you to see the message. Dinner, Oh, come, Sir Raymond. Come, children. Come, children. Come, children. Come, children. to show you the rest of the presents. Here you are, Kenny. You call them the loot. Oh. <laughs> They're all right here. We'll show <laughs> oh, this is from Hugh's aunt, and... Hugh? Hugh, it's gone. Huh? Oh, what's gone? Well, that diamond, that gorgeous glass diamond that Gwen sent Could me. Could it be? But it wasn't glass, Phyllis. What? It wasn't, I tell you. Daddy made it in his laboratory. It's a real honest-to-goodness diamond. Absolutely, on my word of honor. Professor Goodman can take a couple of shillings worth of foul-smelling chemicals, and out comes a diamond as big as a plum. It's unnatural, of course, but... But it's real. Oh! 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 oh. Back to these dead. Dead? Merciful heavens. Who made it? Oh! Oh! Get a doctor, somebody! Uh, call the police. The police! Oh! Oh, oh Sir Raymond, Sir Raymond. Where is Sir Raymond? Yes, Sir yes, 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 Sally. Can you go here? But I am telling you what happened. We came popping into the room. Everything was strictly top hole. Went bingo. The jolly old birds tumbled right on the poor fellow. Yes. Cold as a cucumber he was. Conked right on the visa. And what? Why don't I speak English? I said, listen, officer, this is no time for joking. Well, we have a gory corpse lying on the floor in here. Here, let me have that. Oh. 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 I regret to inform you, madam, Sir Raymond has gone. Gone? Oh, I never heard of such a thing. Well, perhaps he stepped out for a walk or something. In a way, he has, miss. What's that, Penny? Sir Raymond and his secretary, Mr. Roberts, have left for London. Oh, London? 
Quick, look up the train. I know them, sir. What's the next through train? The next through train has just left, sir. Get my car ready. Very good, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. It's all right. The, the police have left. The police? Oh, I can't believe Mr. Raymond would rush away like that without even leaving a note for me. Oh, where are you going? Well, for Sir Raymond, he's got the diamond. Do you know who Sir Raymond is? Why, he's the head of the Metropolitan Diamond Syndicate. Yes, I know. But... And if you think that a man of his wealth and position would stoop to stealing an imitation diamond... But it's the same as a real one. This artificial diamond may ruin an industry and send Sir Raymond and his stockholders to the poorhouse. You mean my diamond stocks might go down? Well, if they can make diamonds cheaply in a laboratory, they'll be as worthless as pebbles. And Sir Raymond knows that. Oh... What do you think he'll do? Well, he's off to a good start with a murder. I'll be back soon, darling. Hugh? Oh. Hugh, you can't go now. Not almost on our wedding day. The police will do what has to be done. Well, I'll be back very soon, and Algie will take care of everything. Oh, of course, I'll attend to the police when they get here, but what do I do exactly? You understand, dear? Hugh Drummond, if you go now, you needn't come back again ever. But I must go. All right, then, go. Play cops and robbers all your life. I never want to see you again. I... I hope you... There's Tenny. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Algie. Algie, run and catch him. It's here that he wears this and he keeps warm and dry and, and that nothing happens to him. I'm coming, Mr. Longworth. You're sure you don't mind my pet? Oh, what good will it do me? Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, what will we do? Oh. <laughs> We're a railway guide, Roberts. Yes. Well, what are you going to do? I'm merely taking an obvious precaution. Precaution? Oh, against customs. You better cable ahead of the next stop. Arrange an emergency meeting of the syndicate at my house in London. Let me have the diamond. I'd rather look after you, sir. Like, good idea, Tenny. I'd rather like it, sir. Ah, oh, watch it! Now to breezy now to Raymond, huh? Now we're breaking in with the dawn, my friend. The hour when dead men walk and sick men die. Oh, please. Besides, I've got to figure out how to get him away from his compartment so that you can search it, Alfie. Right ho. Uh, will you tell Mr. Drummond I wish to speak to him? Sir Raymond Blantry to see you, sir. Ah, ask him to come in. Can you please come in? No, I'd rather see him in the vestibule. He says he'd rather see you in the vestibule. That's very kind of him. Now's your chance, Algy. You wait here, Teddy. I'll take a look at Blanford's compartment. Ah, uh, Sir Raymond? Yes, I saw you come aboard, Drummond. Is anything wrong? What do you think? I, uh, I don't understand. What made you change your plans about the wedding? Little matter of a theft of a diamond. Yes. And a murder. Murder? Drummond, you're wasting your time. Can't involve me. I know nothing whatever about the murder of that detective. And the theft of the diamond? Do you imagine anyone will find it in my possession? No, you wouldn't be so careless, would you? Take my advice, my young friend. Go back to Geneva. On the contrary, Sir Raymond, I shall accompany you to London. With a police escort, if it can be arranged. Roberts? Well, what happened? You never told me that detective was killed. Killed? 
You must have had a skull as thin as paper. I've told you before, You Robert. told me to get the diamond at any cost. Alfie, what'd you find? Nothing. Oh, I thought as much. What are we going to do now? The cable colonel isn't. We've got the man. Uh, where? Cablegram from Captain Drummond, sir. Put it down. Who'd you say? Captain Drummond, sir. Oh. Thanking me for the presence, I suppose. Please ask French authorities to arrest Sir Raymond Blantry, London Express, Hugh Drummond. So that's his answer to my little uh, joke with the books. <laughs> I've never seen anything so transparent in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny, Greer. I'm sure I don't know, sir. Uh, you will, you will. And so will Captain Drummond. Arrest Sir Raymond Blantry. Take a cablegram. We've stopped at the station, sir. Telegram for Captain Drummond. Ah, uh, good old Nielsen. That's probably his answer to my cablegram. Good old Nielsen. He never fails. Impossible grant your request, but will arrest Santa Claus and Snow White if you demand it. Nielsen. Well, that's that. that. Looks as though we'll have to give up, then. Is that your opinion, Tony? It's just occurred to me, sir. If we have another shot at finding that diamond and find it, the French police are bound to take notice of that, sir. But I searched with a fine tooth comb. And he's right. We've got to have a showdown right now. I think they've gone. They can't have gone far. Quick, Tony, get the bags. Now, put her on you. Yes, sir. Quite a small one. Well, that's where they went then. Uh, Tenny, get a taxi. Yes, sir. Here, ma'am. Taxi! Taxi me to the taxi. What to you? We've got to get to London. Oh, monsieur, it's impossible. You keep planes with Charlie, don't you? We do, monsieur, but our last one was just hired. Uh, two English gentlemen in a great hurry to get to London. I'll pay you 10,000 francs for the use of a fast three-seater. Have you a French license? Oh, no, but can't you think of a man who might do it? There is one. Over there, Raoul. Calling Croydon, air taxi F, XOYU. Calling Croydon. I'm within your radio beam. Can you give me my position? Give me my position. Give me my radio bearing. Croydon, Corin, French air taxi, F-X-O-Y-U. Croydon, Corin, French air taxi, F-X-O-Y-U. Ceiling here zero. Ceiling absolutely zero. Turn back to Le Bourget, F-X-O-Y-U. Ceiling or not, I'm coming down. Give me a radio bearing. Come on, Innes, I know you and I've landed blind before. This is Drummond speaking. Will you give me that bearing? Who says I can't? You crazy man, turn on your lights. I'm coming down. Suggest you hold Blanchard until I arrive by plane. Hugh Drummond. Greer, at Croydon Airport right away. This is Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard cutting in on Croydon wavelength. Police calling air taxi FXOYU. This is an official order. An official order. Do not attempt to land. Landing permission refused. Return at once across channel. I am coming down. We we'll land here. Uh, Professor Goodwin is expecting me. I'm Sir Raymond Blantry of the Metropolitan Diamonds Institute. Mr. Steiner made the appointment for oh, me. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, but he didn't say there'd be anyone with you. Oh, Mr. Roberts is my associate. Oh, very good, sir. This is a matter of utmost delicacy. Very interesting. Oh, uh, would you care to read my notes? 
<clears throat> you know, sometimes even I can't read my own writing. Matter of fact, I could probably make these diamonds for a shilling each. Now, if you put up these on, gentlemen, please. Is there, is there any danger? Danger? Oh, I see you refer to my wall. Well, before I learned how to cool diamonds quickly, a small stone exploded. Sometimes they explode even now. However, I have, I think, eliminated that possibility. Now, gentlemen, are you ready? Stand back. Gentlemen, you have been present at the birth of a diamond. Now, after a few seconds cooling, you shall see your stone. There, gentlemen, is your diamond. That isn't a diamond. <laughs> Perfect. About 15 carat. Oh, size makes no difference. If I had larger equipment, like Dr. Petulian's... Petulian? Yes, Petulian, the American scientist. I could make diamonds as large as ostrich eggs. Well, then why don't you? Because Petulian is my rival, and I don't want him to know yet what I've done. Professor, my colleagues and I will pay you 50,000 pounds for the exclusive control of your process. <laughs> a bad bargain, gentlemen. After a few weeks, my process will be free to everyone. If you publish this formula, the most precious jewels in the world will be worth no more than pebbles. Yes, but diamonds will still be beautiful. Yeah, what woman will want to wear diamonds then? We are ready to pay you 50,000 pounds to destroy your notes, to suppress your secret. I am only interested in being the first man to make a perfect large diamond. Well, name your figure. Anything up to half a million pounds. That means power, security, leisure. But I have all that I want. Do you mean to say that you value your name on a scientific paper more than half a million pounds in cash? Yes, yes. That's exactly the case. We ask that you consider the matter for a day or two. Gentlemen, my decision is final. This is more serious than you think, Professor. Yes, uh, business is serious, but I... This is serious to yourself. My associates must protect their investments in one way or another. And while you're thinking it over, I suggest that you refrain from making more diamonds. Good morning. Ooh. I'm in time, Sir Raymond. Good morning, Captain Drummond. Nice to see you again. And your friend, too. 
Permit me to return your promise. And you searched his compartment. A book's no place to hide a diamond. The trouble is, Sir Raymond didn't know that. Oh. Stupid of him, wasn't it? Oh, it's you, Drummond. An LJ. So Sir Raymond threatened you? Definitely. What do you suggest that I do? You sell your formula? <laughs> I will not. Why don't you take a trip and miss the Royal Society meeting? On these notes, I'm preparing a paper that will make my name ring around the world. It's safe for you to walk about the streets of London with those notes in your pocket. Now, why don't let me keep them for you in my safe deposit box? No, thank you, Captain Drummond. I'll not be intimidated by anybody. The colossal impudence of them. Stop making diamonds. I will not stop. I'll make a bigger diamond than the Kohenor. Or even, even the Cullinan. I'll make the biggest diamond in the world. Dr. Batulian's laboratory. But he's very busy. Yes. Doctor, it's Professor Goodman. Professor Goodman? But I don't see why he should call me. Yeah? Yes, how are you, Professor? Well, fine. You've made a 15 carat diamond. Well, fine work, Professor. Congratulations. Hey, yes, I understand. Well, no, not at the present time. I'll be glad to let you use my equipment. Yes, what time? Very well, I'll bring the equipment over to you at 9 o'clock tonight. Yes. Goodbye. You can't do that, Captain Drummond. Tell the commissioner it's urgent. I've already given him that well, message. Tell him it won't take five minutes. He said it won't take five minutes, sir. Right here, right here. I thought I told you not to land in England. No, Colonel, you told me not to land at Croydon, and I obeyed you to the letter. I landed at Basingstoke. Drummond, will you please go away? You don't want me to pull out when I know a man's going to be murdered. You always have to interfere. Who's going to be murdered? Professor Bernard Goodman, number 24, St. Laban's Road. And who's going to do the job? I can tell you that, too. Sir Raymond Blantry. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny. Come with me, my dear fellow. Come with me. Sir Raymond, this impetuous young man has just warned me that you are about to murder Professor Goodman. Really? Uh, Colonel, <laughs> Sir Raymond has just asked me to have Professor Goodman placed in protective custody. You see, Drummond, I too share your feeling that the dear Professor is in danger. But you can't arrest an innocent man. Drummond, you're a young fool. The manufacture of diamonds is as dangerous to the Empire as counterfeiting. Message for you, sir. Huh? Hmm, the situation has taken a new turn, gentlemen. The Home Secretary instructs me to give police cooperation to Goodman and to the American scientist, Dr. Petulian. Petulian, did you say? It appears that these gentlemen are about to attempt the manufacture of a diamond that will outshine the crown jewels of the Empire. Well, that's that. I must be on my way. Hmm. I have an appointment. With Professor Goodman? Curiosity, my young friend, is reputed to have killed a cat. Drummond, uh, will you please go away? Uh, go back and get married, or whatever it was. And stop minding other people's business. Uh, and stop annoying Sir Raymond Blantry. He's one of the most important men in the country. And the murderer. What? Why do you know that? I don't know it, Colonel. I only suspect it. You do? Get out. Get out! Or I'll... Colonel! Huh? Your tie is quick. Hey! Hello? Hello? Division 5, Trendenis. For two of your best men on the house at 24th and Laban's Road at 9 o'clock tonight. Fast, right. And Professor Goodman arrivals in a process for making artificial diamonds. We've experimented along similar lines, if that's what you mean. And you failed where Goodman has succeeded. At the present, it appears so. <clears throat> your uh, syndicate is interested in the Goodman process? Very interested. Well, then, why don't you talk to him? We have. We made him a very handsome offer. But Professor Goodman seems to think more of the glory of his discovery. But if he says he won't sell, he won't sell. He's a very stubborn old man. I understand you have an appointment with him. Yes. I'm letting him use some of my equipment. 
about taking it to him tonight. Nine. We can make it worth your while not to uh, keep that appointment. No. For what reason? Goodman's formula must be destroyed. I see. You want the formula destroyed. Don't you, Dr. Batulian? I have no objection. Well, we can help you, Doctor. Yes? <clears throat> Pack this. We'll pay you 5,000 pounds to let us keep your appointment with Goodman this evening. 5,000 pounds? But what if I discover the process myself later? Financial arrangements will be made with you so that your discovery will never become known. It seems I have no choice, gentlemen. What do you propose? Before we make a bargain, we must understand each other completely. Goodman and his laboratory will be totally destroyed by an explosion. What do you expect me to do? Nothing, except remain in your rooms, so that you'll have an alibi in the event of an investigation. I see. And you two gentlemen will keep my appointment with Professor Goodman. Exactly. I will arrive at nine o'clock, disguised as you. He'll never suspect. Very well. I'll remain here. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Get the equipment out of this box. Aren't you going to keep your appointment with yes, Professor Goodman? Yes, we'll be there. But we'll be there before nine o'clock. And when Professor Goodman's laboratory is destroyed, they'll find the body of Mr. Roberts. We'll have Professor Goodman at some out-of-the-way place in the country. Oh, I see. Then you're not satisfied with Blantry's 5,000 pounds. I think Blantry will be glad to pay us 50,000 pounds. Oh, Dr. Batulian, how good of you to have come. Uh, I'm afraid I'm a little ahead of time. Well, uh, better early than late, eh? <laughs> uh, my equipment. Oh, uh, come in, then. Now, round to the right. You can go, Mrs. Weavens. I shan't require you any more tonight. Thank you, sir. Twenty-four. This is ours. Here. Who are you? I'll ask you the same thing, my man. We're keeping an eye on this house tonight. That's who we are. Now answer the question. I'm the lady what does for Professor Goodman. And these persons just left a parcel. But at present, if you've no objection, I'm in search of refreshment. Here, what do you want? I have an appointment with Professor Goodman. What's the name? I am Dr. Petulian. That's right. You can go in. Thank you. Come in, Mr. Robert. I regret to inform you, sir. Professor Goodman does not answer his doorbell. But I have a try myself, huh? Yeah, I advise against it. Why? There are two constables lurking in this robbery, sir. Well, it must be a real one, don't it? Tanny, get, get me a... Uh, yeah, will this be of any use, sir? Oh, no, Tanny. <coughs> what about this, sir? An excellent idea. I rather like it, sir. Now, you wait here, and if the constables start after me, give me a double toot in the horn, right? Right. Two toots, sir? Right. Good, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Captain Drummond, we have special instructions to look for you, sir. Very flattering. You better come along with us, sir.
I'm rather afraid it should have been two toots on. Oh, dear. What are we going to do now? There's a van just stopped outside Professor Goodman's house. Sir. Something must be wrong. I'm going in. After all, it's my own father-in-law. I'll go along with you. No, 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 no. You lie, Doggo. If they try to follow me, stop them. Stop them, sir? How? Yes. Well, how? You know, just... Stop them. Oh, yes, Stop from me, sir. Used to lock you up. Now you're furnished. Quick. You're trying to batter your way into that house. Colonel, I. Housebreaking is housebreaking. I told you I was only trying to prevent a murder. You always break the law with the best intentions, don't you? Well, this time you've gone too far. Take him away. All right, Colonel. But after you lock me up, will you search Professor Goodman's house? I will not. There's nothing wrong with Professor Goodman, there's nothing wrong with his house. What happened? I got off for a pretty good idea. Let me be quiet. Hello. Ha. There's been an explosion, sir. Oh. Where? There's been an explosion, sir. Oh! I know that. Where? 24 to Laban's Road, sir. Come on. What shall we do with the prisoner, sir? Bring him along. Somebody hit me. Easy I... now. They often get this way in mild concussion cases. They remember a lot of things. A lot of things that aren't so. The only one, the only one so far, sir, identified Professor Goodman, sir. His son-in-law identified the watch and shoes. Hmm. Well, Drummond, I owe you... Drummond! Be beg pardon, please. He seems to be gone. Well, all of you standing here. Go and get him! No one's allowed in here, sir. But Professor Goodman's a friend of mine. Sorry, sir. It was a laboratory in the whole rear of the house blown to bits. Can't let anyone in. I told you, fellas, to stay back. That's all I want to get a picture. I can't down stay, will you? Yeah, where are you going? I don't know. I don't know. You'd better come across the inspector. Uh, oh, I'm Dr. Batulian. I'm looking for Professor Goodman's house. I, uh, I have an appointment with him. Appointment, eh? What time? At uh, 9 o'clock. He uh, sent an express van for me and my equipment. Nine o'clock, and you arrive here now. Well, I'm trying to tell you that the men drove me for miles through the side streets, and... There he is! The blackguard, there he is! What do you mean? Why, he was the man that called on Professor Goodman early this evening. Impossible. I haven't seen Professor Goodman in years. Oh, I did speak to him on the telephone. And you didn't call at his house tonight? Oh, as heaven is my witness. Pray this is a matter for a magistrate to decide. Sergeant! Well, you can't do this to me. Oh, I can't, eh? 
You can, but you shouldn't, Inspector. Don't call me Inspector. What's this all about, anyway? He snaked through the lines and was popping about in the house, sir. I confess. But I had to look around before your men trampled everything into the dust. And I found some... Hmm. Some bits of hair. Obviously, part of a false beard or wig. In the name I sainted on. Someone came here disguised as Dr. Batulian. With a packing case full of TNT. Now, if you quite finished with me, Inspector... Don't call me Inspector! Sorry. May I be on my way? With pleasure. You're not eating your kipper, sir. They're quite nice. Penny, can't you remember anything about the van you tried to follow? Not exactly, sir. I'm sure I should know it if I saw it again. Isn't Mr. Longworth breakfasting this morning, sir? Yeah, he was up and away hours ago. He's out at the airport hoping to meet Mrs. Longworth. But there's no airliner schedule, sir. I know. Hold him that. Good morning. Good morning, Penny. They did charter a plane. Hugh. Hugh. What really happened? Well, Gwen, there was an explosion, and, well, nobody seems to know exactly what happened. Did, did he suffer much? Oh, it must have been all over in a fraction of a second. But the identification was very difficult, Gwen, and... You mean the police aren't sure it was, Daddy? Well, they seem to be sure, but... But you're not. Well, now, Gwen, really, I... You think my father may be alive? Come, dear, we'll, we'll take you to the hotel. Oh, I just know Daddy's alive. You'll find him. Algie will help. We'll all help. Penny, we've got to do something. Can you remember anything about the third man who came out of the house after Mr. Longworth was hit on the head? It was very, very dark, sir. But I believe he had a beard, sir. I'll see who it is. I must see Captain Drummond at once. It's very important. I'm Dr. Petunian. I want you to sit down, Doctor. The late Professor Goodman seems to have had a premonition of what was to happen to him. Yes? A week ago, he sent me a letter requesting that in the event of his death, I was to carry on his diamond experiments. I see. But uh, how does this affect me? Goodman gave his precious note to you for safekeeping. Well, on the contrary, Doctor. I asked him to do so, but he refused. I know you have those notes, Captain Drummond. Read this. Dear Drummond, in the event of anything happening to me, will you please turn over my notes to my old friend and colleague, Dr. Max Petulian, Bernard Goodman. You'll give me the notes at once, please. Uh, yes, they're, they're in my safe deposit box. I could go there with you. Yes, of course, but I should like to have this handwriting checked just to make sure it is, Professor Goodman. I... As you wish. There's so little time left before the meeting of the Royal Society. Yes, but... Perhaps you'll come back, say, four o'clock this afternoon? Four o'clock. I'll be here. Thank you. Penny? Yes, sir. Give me some writing paper, will you? Yes, sir. Green plain paper in the envelope, sir. Isn't that rather risky? There's no time for anything else. How many guests are you expecting, sir? Only two. Tea or whiskey and soda, sir? Neither, Tenny. You'd better stay within call with a revolver. Very good, sir. Oh, oh, now, come in, Inspector. Come Don't call me, Inspector. Well, <laughs> what'd you call me down here for? There's that letter I phoned you about. Hmm. Well, you'll say it's a forgery. Not at all. 
Gwen Longworth says her father's handwriting. Then go ahead. Give Dr. Petulian the notes. <laughs> I can't. You see, Professor Goodman didn't leave them to me. What? If Goodman didn't leave them, why should he? What? Exactly. Uh, I'll wait. I thought you would. But only for a few minutes. Perfectly obvious Petulian isn't coming here. And just wait. I can't wait. I might have known it'd be like this. Drummond! What? Why don't you go back to Switzerland? And the man who called on me this morning couldn't have been the real Petulian. What are you talking about? It must have been a man who was impersonating him. And there is the reason why he didn't come back at four o'clock. Oh. Colonel, why don't you go back to Scotland Yard or wherever it was and take your police escort with you? They're enough to frighten away Petulian or his impersonator or both. And I know! My tie is crooked. Oh! Tenny! Tenny! Won't you come in, Dr. Petulian? Uh, uh, what's the meaning of this? I, I owe you an apology, Doctor. An apology? Why, you are. Uh, please let me explain. Won't you come in and sit down? It, it all began, Doctor, when a man obviously impersonating you came to my flat this morning with a letter. Letter? Yes. Do you recognize this? That's just what I came to see you about. This letter was stolen from my rooms last night. And you didn't report it to the police? Oh, absolutely not. The police would only have made matters worse by publicizing what Goodman wanted kept quiet. Uh, now, will you please comply with Goodman's wishes and turn those notes over to me? Yes, of course. Tenny? Yes, sir. Will you get Professor Goodman's notes? Very good, sir. Thank you. Good day, sir. Penny, my hat. And while you're following that gentleman, sir, might I snoop around a bit on my motorcycle? You might, Tenny. And tell Mr. Longworth I'll be back shortly or else I'll telephone him. Very good, sir. Shall I speed up and lose him? I wouldn't lose our friend Drummond for anything in the world. In the village garage, we'll park there. Are you walking all the way to the house? Better if we make Drummond follow us on foot. house was something of a collector. So I see. His taste rather ran the sharp edge thing. My own hobby runs the sherry. I can recommend it to Montillardo very highly. Thank you. I I came here to see Professor Goodman. What? To see Professor Goodman. I'm not a medium. I can't bring back the dead. Ah, but Professor Goodman isn't dead, Doctor. At least the letter you gave me from him was written within the last 24 hours. What do you mean? The ink. Oh, of course. The blue-black ink. It changes to black only after a few days. And this ink was still blue. <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we? 
Even Bulldog Drummond makes mistakes now and then. Look out behind you. Oh, no, I won't fall for that one, Doctor. Or whoever you are. Now, if you don't mind, I'll thank you. Hugh Drummond. He was still alive. So far, yes. But I didn't expect you to be trapped here with me. <laughs> Neither did the two of you. Gentlemen, don't you think it's about time we came to an understanding? Now, you tricked me into bringing Drummond into this. Instead of Goodman's notes, you gave me blank sheets of paper. I want those notes. If you'll release Drummond and take me to my house, I'll give them to you. Where are they? in the pocket of my laboratory jacket. Your, your laboratory was blown to smithereens, Professor. Then my notes are destroyed. Unfortunate. What you've done once, you can do again. But I can't get it done in time for the Royal Society meeting. I'm not interested in the Royal Society. Your process should have been worth millions to you. Well, it'll be worth millions to me, and I mean to have it. It'll take a very long time. Surely not, with an able assistant like Captain Drummond. And if we refuse? The consequences will be unpleasant. And that's all the help you can give us. I know positively nothing of the others. But I want to find Roberts even more than you do. Why he should run away is a complete mystery. Well, mystery, it's all a mystery. Goodman blown to bits. Petulian's supposed to aid him, disappears. Roberts disappears, now Drummond disappears. Drummond gone? Vanished into thin air. Have you any idea where he is? The only clue is his abandoned car, found in the village of Market Rutherford. Market Rutherford? Yes, yeah. you know where it is? Uh, no, no, I have uh, no idea. Uh, well, I must be off. Uh, uh, don't you go disappearing, too. <laughs> Never fear. Have that man followed. He might lead us to Roberts. Oh, I know something's happened to Hugh. He'd never stay away this long without telephoning. Captain Hugh Rutherford? Who? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Captain Hugh Drummond. Oh, oh no, no, no. My name's Longworth. Algernon Longworth. What's happened? Well, uh, a car, miss, registered in the name of Captain Hugh Drummond has been left standing alongside a fire hydrant since last night. Where? Uh, at Market Rutherford, Miss. Market Rutherford, huh? Well, let's go. Teddy! 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 Teddy's off on his motorcycle searching. Here, yeah, boy, boy! Have you seen it? There's a truck like you described in that there garage, Mr. Tenney. Filling up with petrol. It'll be out any minute now. I hope you've spotted it. If you have, I'll give you a pound. Oh. Most of my assistants only get a couple of shillings. Oh, but how many of us are there? Oh, eight or ten scattered about from London to the north of England. Oh, hey, what an organization. Yes, I rather like it. Ah, Or I shall be forced. 
to strip you the snuff. Oh, Mr. Tell you wouldn't. I would, and how? Base headquarters will be right here in this office. Now, Hugh couldn't have gone far without his car, not more than a couple of miles, right? Right, right. Right. So, I have drawn this circle. Then you must be somewhere within the circle. All we have to do is to scour that circle. With a fine-tooth comb. From house to house. But that will take days and days. Oh, no, it won't. Each of us will take one district. A, B, C. Splendid. You should have been an army officer. I should have been Mrs. Hugh Drummond today. But I'm not. Uh, let me see. A. B, C. Right? Right, right. Right. A. I say, old man, have you seen anything of Captain Drummond? I beg your pardon. I'm looking for a Captain Drummond. It's... We don't want none. Now, the slower the better. Kenny! You're all right, Kenny. Am I, sir? So you walked into the trap, too, huh? Oh, yes, sir. Why? I did it on purpose, sir. What? I planned to be captured, sir. Look at my legs. Oh, no, sir. I'm not out of my head. I wonder. I do my best to give satisfaction. <laughs> May I suggest, sir, if you saw a little higher up, you'd be able to push and pull at the same time. Sir. An excellent idea, Tony. I rather like it, sir. Pardon. Has the Captain Drummond been here? Um, uh, Captain Drummond, did you say? Yes. Well, uh, who are you, may I ask? I'm Miss Clavering, his fiancée. Come in, Miss Clavering. <coughs> well, that's that. I hope Phyllis had better luck than we did. Oh, good old Phyllis. She'll run into something. She's always lucky. I say, where's your phone? Yes, sir. Inside the office, sir. Hello, old boy. Elsie, Gwen, I've got great news for you. Your father's outside. Oh. My father? Yes. <laughs> Look out, old boy. She's going to faint. Here, here, here. Don't faint now. <laughs> Elsie, give me the telephone. Here are. Elsie, sometimes I wonder. Oh, she you won't. Phyllis be glad when she gets back. Phyllis, when she gets back from where? Oh, well, you see, we had to locate you. She's out ringing doorbells. She'll be back any minute. Is she alone? Of course she is. Yes. You see, we had to divide up the territory. It was quicker that way. A, B, and C. C, that was her route. Algie, that's why she's not back. Huh? She's going to Batulian's house. Oh. Now, lend me a gun. Uh... I'm very sorry to have to do this, young lady, but you shouldn't have interfered. Everything packed? Yes, sir. We'd better get going. As soon as we dispose of our guests upstairs, we'll be perfectly safe. I'll put these in the car. Okay, let's go.
Come on, get up on it, man. No mercy signs. A dummy! They're gone. Up your hands, gentlemen. And no monkey shine. Now, if you'll just step this way, please. Thank you. Now, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm afraid you'll have to come on a little journey, my dear young lady. Petulian? Come on. Now, now, this sort of thing won't do at all. Roberts, your disguise is perfect. You fool it! Ah, Stop this nonsense, Roberts. I've told you I'm not Roberts. Roberts is dead. And you killed him and left him in Goodman's laboratory to be blown to bits. A very good guess, Drummond. But none of you will tell any tales. Now face the wall. Have you thought of the police? The police will continue to search for Roberts, thinking he's disguised as me. Now. Uh. Save him for me, Drummond. Terrific, man, Sergeant. Take off his disguise. Ah, oh, you're making a mistake, Inspector. Don't call me, Inspector. What mistake? You've got the wrong man. What are you talking about? This man is the real Batulian. You may pull his beard if you like. He knew that Roberts was about to take his place at the appointment with Professor Goodman this evening. But he got there first and pretended to be disguised as himself. You see, that was his perfect alibi. Drummond, we'll make a detective of you yet. Look him up, my dear. Good work, Newton. Lucky you happened in. Hmm. We didn't happen in, Sir Raymond. We were following you, as it occurs. Me? Well, I had nothing whatever to do with this, I assure you. I'm always opposed to violence. Of course, sir. We're very grateful to you for helping put an end to this great menace to international economics. There's also the matter of the murder of a detective in Geneva. The Swiss police will be glad to know why he was killed. Uh, and then we shall also want to know uh, why Professor Goodman's house was blown up. Take him away. And this was supposed to be our wedding day. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but if there's a registry office still open, if there isn't, you'll probably break into one. No, you won't. You leave on the first boat train for Switzerland under police escort. Darling, a shotgun wedding. 